Hello, welcome to the Friday, March 29th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Madrid, Spain. I keep saying one of the most useful log sources that you can get in your network that's actually also reasonably easy and cheap to get is DNS logs. Now, Typically, you would get them from your DNS servers, but either you don't run your own DNS server or you're having problems enabling sufficient granular logging. After all, doing full query logging can sometimes be quite taxing on your name server. Also, if you're running Windows name servers, the log format isn't that easily digested by your normal set of log analysis tools. So Xavier today has another option for you, and that is running your own passive DNS service. Passive DNS service, essentially a sniffer that watches your network traffic for DNS queries and replies, and then summarizes them. And with passive DNS, the tool that Xavier introduces you here, you even have the option to create JSON formatted output, which of course is ideal if you then import the data into Elastic search in order to integrate it with your other security data. The same, of course, is also true for Splunk. So that's the tool actually that Xavier is discussing in his blog post. So take a look at his post if you are interested in any of the details. And Cisco's small business routers RV320 are in the news again, and this time it's certainly not good news. About a month ago, Cisco did patch a fairly simple web application vulnerability in these routers that allowed remote code execution without authentication. Well, it turns out that this patch was actually not a patch at all. Instead, the only thing that the patch did was it did add a configuration option to the Nginx configuration, that's the web server running on these routers, that would block any user agent that contains curl. Of course, many proof of concept exploits released for the vulnerability did use curl in order to launch the exploit, but Everybody probably that listens to this podcast knows it's trivial to change the user agent to anything else. German security consulting team, Red Team Pentesting, that originally found the vulnerability, also notified Cisco of this incomplete patch about a month ago. Cisco has not released an update up to this point, and Red Team Pentesting now went ahead in order to disclose details about this incomplete patch. Exploit attempts using altered user agents have already been seen in the wild. Not really clear if this was actually intentionally an altered user agent or if these exploits just happen to use a different tool than curl. But of course, other vendors don't want to be outdone by Cisco when it comes to vulnerable routers. So we also have a newly released proof of concept exploit for TP-Link's smart router SR20. This proof of concept exploit takes advantage of a TP-Link's TP-Link device debug protocol that apparently is exposed by this router to the internal network. And so far it's somewhat better in the sense that it can't be exploited from the internet. However, this particular service, while it doesn't accept HTTP requests, could be used to execute arbitrary commands on the device. So without accepting HTTP requests, probably cross-site request forging is not going to work in this case, but any type of malware on a system in the local network, of course, could control this router. TP-Link has not yet responded to the vulnerability report, so there is no word about any patches coming for this problem. Well, that is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.